Hey everyone, it's Victoria with Nutrition by Victoria and this is going to be an update video on my high carb vegan pregnancy. So I'm currently into week 18. I'm exactly 18 weeks and one day pregnant and I'll show you guys my baby bump. And there it is, the little bump. Kind of looks like a food baby, but it never goes down. <laughs> so, yeah, a little bit uh, bigger than my uh, first trimester update video, but that's normal. So, uh, in this video, I'm going to go over uh, physical changes, dietary changes, and some lifestyle modifications that I've made as I've moved into my second trimester and I'm almost halfway through my pregnancy. So, uh, physical changes, I'd say I've put on around 10 pounds, give or take, uh, since the beginning of pregnancy. So, uh, pre-pregnancy, I weighed uh, about 150 pounds, and um, now I weigh about 160 pounds. Uh, again, give or take some, um, that number's going to continue to increase as I uh, progress through the pregnancy. Other uh, physical changes that I've noticed is my breasts have increased in size and my waist is continuing to grow. It's, uh, I've put on about two to three inches around my waist since pre-pregnancy as well. So pre-pregnancy I had a waist um, of about 27 inches and now it's measuring about 29 to 30 inches. So those are um, the, really the only physical changes that I've noticed so far. Otherwise the rest of my body is staying relatively lean and my legs and arms and everywhere else, uh, just the baby making parts are growing. So uh, that's that. Um, dietary changes, nothing has really changed in my diet um, except for I'm eating a little bit more. So uh, how much food I eat really depends on my appetite, how much um, activity I've done that day, uh, if I'm fatigued or not, um, how my digestive system is functioning etc. So I'm sticking to um, a high, high carbohydrate, low fat, uh, plant-based vegan diet. My diet consists of about 80 to 90 percent carbohydrates, 5 to 10 percent fat, 5 to 10 percent protein in terms of total um, macronutrient intake um, for total calories. I'm consuming roughly uh, 3,500 calories a day on average, sometimes less, sometimes a little bit more. Uh, really depends on my appetite, um, but I am able to meet all of my nutrient requirements through my diet only. So the blood work that I had done, uh, that I showed you guys in that video, I had I had that done before having uh, taking a prenatal vitamin that I showed you guys in my last video. Uh, the first trimester overview video and I've since discontinued taking the prenatal vitamin. Um, like I said, I do believe my diet is sufficient enough in nutrients that I don't need to take a prenatal and uh, my blood work indicated that as well. So I just have to continue eating, eating, eating and making sure I'm getting enough every day. So uh, other things about my diet, I'm eating a lot of fruit. Um, my fruit makes up about 50 to 75 percent of my uh, total calorie intake. The rest comes from starches like white rice and potatoes, or I'll make a homemade pizza. I stick to a gluten-free diet predominantly. We'll have gluten on occasion in the form of like a takeout pizza, but that's maybe once a month max. Um, I have a big fruit smoothie every day. Um, lots of fresh fruit. You guys can check out my Instagram account. I post a lot of food pictures there, what I'm eating, um, as well as what I'm doing for exercise. Um, I'm not craving anything crazy, just the foods that I've been eating over the past three years, which has been fruit, vegetables, and starchy uh, carbohydrates. And um, in terms of vegetables, I'm eating a lot of leafy greens. Lately, I've been craving a lot of spinach, and it's high in iron and vitamin C, so that makes sense. Um, I do, in general, crave foods that contain iron in them, like watermelon, oranges, potatoes, bananas, raisins, dates, grapes, cherries, etc. So pretty much all the foods that I eat um, contain iron. 
and then which is important to have enough of while you're pregnant. Uh, I'm not craving any beans or legumes or overt fats. I will have avocado on occasion, but I don't um, like to have a lot of fat or protein in my diet. I feel best when I'm sticking to lower percentages of those in my diet, but I will have them occasionally. Uh, like when I'm out to eat or something, which is occasional as well. So that's it in terms of diet. Uh, the one weird craving that I am having is for hot sauce. So I have, uh, I use Tabasco hot sauce as a condiment um, pretty much every day. That's the only weird pregnancy craving I'm having. Uh, and it is relatively low in sodium, it's 35 milligrams per teaspoon, which is a serving, and that's about all I use, maybe two of those max. I am sticking to a relatively low sodium diet. Uh, my sodium intake is definitely under 1500 milligrams a day, um, and I'd say I average around 1000 milligrams a day or under in terms of sodium intake. Uh, so that's that. My water intake has increased as well. I do live in a hot, dry climate, so, and we are getting into summertime, so I'm drinking about four liters of water a day. My water demands also um, have gone up slightly from being pregnant as well, so I try to stay hydrated. Um, just like I try to eat enough as well. And I'm pretty consistent and regular about getting enough food and water in so that I'm able to exercise, which is the next thing I'm gonna talk about. So I have had to make modifications um, for my exercise routine. I do cardiovascular exercise every day in the form of cycling or jogging. I jog three times a week for about 20 to 30 minutes and then I cycle for about four hours a week. And uh, my duration and intensity has gone down from the first trimester, but I am still able to get out there and do it and it feels good. Um, I just go at a pace that's comfortable for me. I'd say intensity wise, it's easy to moderate. I don't push myself or overexert myself. I just do what feels good. Um, and I try not, and I have to get up really early in order to beat the heat because it's this morning it was 80 degrees at 5.30, so uh, with the sun not being up, it feels a little bit cooler, um, and I won't overheat if I go out at that time and it is that temperature, but I have to watch it when it starts getting hotter and sunnier outside because it will dehydrate me and, over and I'll get overheated quicker. And that's something you have to watch when you're pregnant is not to get overheated or overexert yourself because you will pay for it in the form of fatigue or just feeling like, crap. So other uh, forms of exercise that I'm doing, I um, have some prenatal uh, exercise DVDs that I just started doing so I have made more modifications um, to my the floor exercise routines that I do like Pilates and resistance training and uh, my yoga practice. Um, I'm also swimming a few times a week and doing water aerobics. So just staying active, doing things that are going to help me prepare for labor and just stay in shape. So you can definitely um, stay active throughout your entire pregnancy as long as you make modifications and just do what feels best for you. And get clearance from your healthcare um, practitioner if you need to. So I was active prior to pregnancy so being active now it hasn't been an issue. Uh, last thing, I am sleeping about 10 hours a night. I love to sleep um, and I go to bed really early so I can get up early to exercise. I rest throughout the day, I take naps. Um, fatigue is something that I've somewhat battled since getting pregnant. I'm just still getting used to not having as much energy as I used to before pregnancy and that's normal. I'm growing a human being inside of my body so not having as much energy um, as before is normal and I just have to pace myself and make sure I do rest enough, get enough rest, get enough food in and get enough water in so that I can maintain my active lifestyle and feel my best and like myself. So other than that, um, I'm feeling really great. I feel like myself. Um, sometimes I forget I'm pregnant except for my little girl and belly down there. Um, and I'll continue to update you guys as my pregnancy progresses. I hope you enjoyed the video 
uh, give this video a like if you did. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention is I am taking a B12 supplement once a week, a thousand micrograms of methylcobalamin in the form of a sub sublingual. So I am staying on top of my uh, B12 levels as well. And uh, I am outside exercising, so I'm able to get enough vitamin D as well. So all of I have all my nutritional needs covered, and it's easy to do um, as long as you know what you're doing and you're able to be consistent with it. So if you need any help with that, please leave a comment below or contact me through my website, Nutrition by Victoria. Um, leave me any questions that you might have. Give this video a like if you did enjoy it and you want to see more update videos from me, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye.